NFL free agency is off to a crazy start for running backs with DeAndre Swift signing to the Bears, Josh Jacobs going to the Packers, and Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles. I mean, each one of these running backs signed for more money than they were projected to get, and we're starting to see running backs being valued in the NFL for the first time in the past like decade. So will the Chargers spend big on a big free agent running back like i mean the only one left right now is basically derrick henry well make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content bro it helps me out so much and now let's talk about this backfield because we all know how big the running game is with greg roman as the offensive coordinator and jim harbaugh as the head coach they have placed a huge emphasis on running the football and there would be no better running back to have in this offense just schematically than Derrick Henry. But again, you have to remember with the 49ers, Greg Roman had a star running back with Frank Gore. Jim Harbaugh was there too as well. And Frank Gore with the 49ers, the first year with Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh was 2011. Frank Gore was 28 years old. So he was an older running back, but he had four straight 1,000 yard seasons until 2014 when he was 31 years old all under Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh. So it's not completely out of the ordinary for them to have an older running back and still get that much out of him. And also Frank Gore, that was not really a running back by committee approach with the 49ers. He was the workhorse, just like Derrick Henry was the workhorse. And he is the biggest name free agent right now in the running back market. But Derrick Henry, he's going to be 30 years old entering this season. So it's not unlikely that he can't still have that same production that he had earlier in his career. I mean, he is coming off two back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. The only thing that I'm concerned with right now is the Chargers have not made any moves as of yet, as of me making this video right now. They haven't traded or cut any of the big four names, so they still don't have the cap space. We don't know how much cap they're going to be working with. And Derrick Henry, if all of these other guys are getting the amount of money that they are getting... Derrick Henry is probably going to be somewhere around that nine to ten million dollar range, probably closer to ten to eleven million, even because some of these guys are getting a lot more money than we expected. And a 30 year old running back at 10 million a year, you don't know when he's going to fall off. What are you going to give him? Two years for 20 million, three years for 30 million? I mean, when he does fall off, He's probably going to fall off the cliff because we have seen running backs as they age, they play really well up until a certain point and then boom, it's like they completely lose it. So with that being said, the risk of what could potentially happen with Derrick Henry not fulfilling that potential of the contract and the amount of money that he is certainly going to get because yes, he does deserve that money. The Chargers, I just don't think they're in that cap situation. They don't have the luxury to pay a running back that kind of money because they don't really have the offensive line in place in order to allow a running back with that kind of potential and with that kind of money attached to him to succeed. In order to have a great running game, what you need to do first is is build those freaking trenches, man. The center position, that's my phone going off, by the way. The center position is the main priority right now for this entire offense, really. And then you look at the left guard, you look at the right guard spot. Those positions, really, they're not filled with great players. Yes, Zion Johnson was a first round pick, but also, yes, he is coming off a season where he struggled a lot. His PFF grading was in the 50s. Jamari Sawyer as well at the right guard position. He didn't play great. Zion Johnson, I would give him this next year at left guard because this would be the first year that he has played back-to-back -back seasons at the same spot along the offensive line, going all the way back to his days at Boston College. So it's not like Zion Johnson can't still live up to that first round hype and be a good left guard. He absolutely can. But the center position is something that we really, really need to address. And with the way that this free agency period is going right now, the running backs are getting a lot of money and the interior offensive linemen might be getting even more money than what the running backs were getting in terms of like what we projected them to get and what they are actually getting. I mean, this guard class and the center class in terms of the free agents, they are getting 
paid, bro. And so if Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman are serious about revitalizing this running game and getting some juice to it to help Justin Herbert be the best quarterback that he can be and bring this offense to a new level, then I think that they should prioritize that interior offensive line, specifically that center position. And one player to do that would be Bradley Bozeman. He was just cut recently by the Panthers in this offseason. So if Joe Hortiz does decide to go for Bradley Bozeman, it won't count against that comp pick formula because he was released. And he also has connections to him because of the Ravens. He actually drafted him in Baltimore. So Bradley Bozeman, let's look at what he has done with the Panthers this past season. He's allowed eight sacks, which is the most among centers, and he has five penalties. His pass blocking grade is in the 40s, but his run blocking grade is a lot better. It's closer to 70. And when you're talking about getting somebody on this offensive line, just like a stopgap kind of player, Bradley Bozeman, I think he's worth bringing in just even as a depth piece, just bring competition in at this center position. He can be a good run blocker, but this doesn't stop you from drafting this position highly. We still are going to need a center of the future. Obviously, the familiarity is there with Bradley Bozeman. He's not proven that he can be a good center with the Panthers. Obviously, the most sacks allowed this past season for a center is not really something that gets your hopes up, right? But he just bring him in for depth, bring him in for competition. This isn't a guy that is going to convince you not to draft the center position highly in this upcoming draft. Because with this draft, this is going to be one of the best draft classes to want a center and to want an interior offensive lineman. So we need to keep that in mind when it comes to this free agent class. It's not necessarily about signing guys to big money deals in order to have them in place on your offensive line as secured starters. It's about bringing guys in for competition and depth even just as injury insurance for somebody that you want to actually have starting coming from the draft. And it's an even better idea to draft an interior offensive lineman at either center or guard highly for the Chargers because of how much money these guys are getting. So now that positional value, when you draft that position higher in the draft, it's even higher because you're getting a guy who's on a rookie contract for four years probably going to be a very good player along your offensive line and you're not going to have to pay him this top market kind of money that we're now seeing these guards getting i mean just look at the rams and what they did with kevin dotson and then they just signed another guard in jonah jackson for 51 million dollars over three years they're putting in almost a hundred million dollars on two guard spots and then they're probably going to move steve avila to center that is a team that is serious about running the ball and so are the eagles man the eagles signing saquon barkley to that contract that is them saying that in order for this jalen hurts offense to work we're gonna need a running back to run the ball and be a workhorse for us saquon barkley We'll see if he can do that for them. He had injury issues in the past. He's been kind of hot and cold. Some people think he lost a step. That's why I didn't want the Chargers to spend big money. We also don't really have the money to spend, but if we did, then certainly it would be a flyer that you might want to take. The Eagles, I think for them, it's a good signing. And then also it's a really good landing spot for Saquon Barkley. And then DeAndre Swift is actually coming from that Eagles backfield. He wasn't really a workhorse, but you can see now he's going to the Bears and he's going to be basically assigned as that explosive running back. He was one of the best in the league, graded by PFF in terms of explosive runs by a running back. And DeAndre Swift, he's going to go into the Bears backfield. They got Roshan Johnson now. They have Khalil Herbert. That's going to be a backfield by committee approach as opposed to what the Eagles are doing now with the workhorse running back. I think if the Chargers really want to get a workhorse running back, you should look at a guy like Ezekiel Elliott. He is older, just like Derrick Henry is older, but you're gonna be spending so much less money on Ezekiel Elliott. And it's still, it's not like he can't provide you with some good depth and some good carries as a running back in a running back by committee approach, but with somebody who does have that workhorse kind of aspect to him. Another guy I like, I've been saying Zach Moss for a while now, man. And then AJ Dillon, he's not going to be in that Packers backfield, obviously, because they just signed Josh Jacobs. A good change of base running back would be like Jarek McKinnon. And then obviously the Ravens connections are there with J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. These are all low money running backs 
that in some of these guys have that change of pace aspect to them. They're explosive. Look at J.K. Dobbins for that <clears throat> little kind of shiftiness there. And then look at other guys like Ezekiel Elliott, like A.J. Dillon, that are tough, big running backs that have that workhorse aspect to them. It's going to be interesting to see which way the Chargers go here in terms of their backfield and in terms of their interior offensive line. Do they go for the route that the Eagles are going right now with the workhorse running back? Or do they go the route that the Bears are going right now with a running back by committee approach? And then even on top of that, look at the Rams are doing $100 million to their interior offensive line. And they're just banking on their offensive line being that good that you can have like anybody in the backfield. I'm not saying Kyron Williams is not a good running back, but they're obviously devoting the most resources to that offensive line. So do the Chargers do that and commit all the resources to the offensive line? Do they commit resources to the running back by committee approach? Or do they go and spend big money for a running back like Derrick Henry or even like make a trade for a big name running back? That is not off the table either. And if you didn't know, I am giving away a PS5 Spider-Man 2 edition. All you have to do is use my sign up link in the description and enter my code McLean, M-A-C-L-A-N-E. When you make your underdog account, you have to deposit at least $10, but you can deposit up to $100 and get that matched. You don't need to spend any money to enter the giveaway, but you do have to deposit at least $10 in order for me to see it. You don't need to make any plays. You don't need to spend any of that money. All you have to do is make that $10 deposit using my code with that signup link and you are entered into the PS5 giveaway. Thank you guys for watching. And if you didn't see my video from this morning, actually, then you can check this out right here. I talked all about the Chargers trade market.